don't get valent in your prayer life, you're not going to get the things that you need from God. Come on, somebody. Some people think it's automatic, but it's not. And namby-pamby, now I lay me down before I go to sleep. Prayers are not going to get you where you need to go. You're going to have to get violent in your prayer life to tear the devil's kingdom down. Come on, somebody. It's time now. We got the Bible said, I think, in Ephesians, it said praying with all prayers. There's different types of prayers. There's intercession, and that is when we are praying for another, whether you know it or not, when the Bible, when it, everywhere in the New Testament it says watch unto pray means intercede and pray. Come on, somebody. Supplication. Supplication is not really a different type of prayer, but what it is is when you get fervent in your prayer life. You get, get on fire and begin to maybe even cry or whatever, but you get serious about what you're doing with all supplications, we got to intercede. There's the basic petition prayer where we are asking God for something. Come on, somebody. But we're going to talk tonight about warfare prayers. We got to learn to go to war and get what we need from, 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 from the kingdom, praise God. Uh, the Bible has said, and we've quoted it for years, but I really don't think we understand it. that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Is that what the Bible says? It says that, I think, in, um, let me see if I got my notes here, Matthew um, 18 and 18, I think, where two or three touch and agree. He's in the midst. Whatever we bind on the earth. He says that two places in Matthew. Matthew 16 and 19, he says that. But the Lord spoke to me one day as I was meditating and praying in prayer, and he said, whatever you bind on earth, you'll bind in heaven. And the Lord spoke to me and said, what heaven are you talking about? Come on, somebody. So, see, we got to know where the real war is coming from tonight, but ain't nothing out of order in the third heaven. That's where his throne is. There's three heavens. Come on, somebody. And where he is, according to second, now, I'm going to just give you one quick scripture because we're running tonight, so you're going to have to run with us. We don't have time to do a lot of teaching because it slow it down and we'll be here a long time. But you can run if you can't get the tape. 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 4, Paul said, I knew a man, whether in the body or out of the body, he had an out-of-body experience. He had a real one. Some of these people talking about they didn't have an out-of-body, and they seen a light, and they came back, and they never get the Holy Ghost, get filled with the Spirit, their life don't change. They ain't had no real experience. But Paul was trans, he was, he was left for dead in the Bible. And they had whipped him, and they stoned him or something, and he died, and then the saints came out and prayed for him, and he returned back, his spirit came back to his body. And he said, whether in the body or out of the body, I can't tell. But his, his spirit left from, from this earth and went up to the third heaven. And he said he heard things that wasn't lawful for a mortal man to utter. Because of the revelation and the things that God had showed him when he, when he was caught up to paradise, he said, um, he said that God had, to, God had to give him a thorn. Now, I know people teach it, but it's not true. People talking about, you know, but we got to have a thorn. Now, you ain't got to have one because you ain't seen nothing. You ain't went nowhere. You ain't done nothing. Can I help somebody? You ain't Pastor Paul. See, don't, don't come up. You don't get one scripture and go crazy with it. That's missed theology all day in the world because nowhere in the Bible did we read that we had to have one. Paul said he had to have one, and then he said why he had to have one. Because of the abundance of the revelation that he had received, and then he went on to say what the thorn was. I'm sick of this misteaching. He said a messenger of Satan to buffet him. That was the thorn. Now he said what the thorn And he said it with no sickness. Go on, keep it if you want to, but you ain't got to keep it. Come on, somebody. That's man-made theology, and it's wrong. Now, I'm in the Bible. I don't care what man teach. Look at the word. Quit listening to this wrong theology that's got us 
messed up. Because if you hear it loud enough, you'll believe it and it ain't even right. Come on. He said, they said, now, Father, Lord, it was a blind man. He said, did this man sin or did his parents sin? Jesus said, neither. He said, but that the glory of God might be revealed. Now, you know when God got the glory? When the man got his sight. Come on, Kyle, y'all listening? Are we in the same Bible or what? This mystiology is killing people. People are missing their blessing because they're not in the Bible. They're listening to this man-made mess. And I don't care. It's not the word of God. He said in the Old Testament, even when he brought them out of Egypt, he said that there was a non-feeble among them. Come on, somebody. He said now, and it was that they was disobedient, he said, uh, uh, certain certain things in Deuteronomy, he said certain curses will come up on them. I think it's Deuteronomy in the 18th chapter. If it's not, it's in the book. Look up the blessings and look up the curses. He said, he said, if you will remember God, then then these blessings will come upon you. You will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed. And it went through the blessings, and then the curses was three times more than the blessings. Come on, somebody. And he said, if you obey him, he said, none of these sicknesses will I put up on you because he put some things on them because they were disobedient. Now, I don't say God is saying, I'm going to make you sick because you're disobedient. No, it's just he won't bless you. And he allowed the enemy to come in and do what he's going to do. Are y'all listening? Now, I ain't saying God is just going, I'm going to make you sick. He's not doing that. But the Bible said when the enemy come in, he said, like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. When he's on your side, the enemy can come, but God stands up and, and, and beat him back. Y'all better hear me today. Come on, somebody. He said, when your enemies come in against you one way, I'll make them leave seven different ways. What is he saying? I'll kick their behind for you and, and send them right back to what the, Worse than when they came in. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God that heals. We serve a God that delivers. We serve a God that's a keeper. We serve a mighty God. We say one thing and then believe something else. Either God going to be God and let every man be alive. That's what the word said. I'm going to stick with the Bible. I'm going to say what he said. Because if you don't believe his word, listen. The only part of the Bible that works for you is the part you believe. Only the part you believe. If you don't believe it, it won't work for you. But, 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 but it'll work if you believe it. And if you believe it, you need to work it. Come on, somebody. If you believe the word, you need to work the word in your life. We're talking about praying now. Come on, somebody. We're talking about warfare prayers. Praise God. Okay, let's go to Psalms 8, 6, and 9 real fast. If somebody, if I'm going to call, I'm going to give some scriptures. If we'll write them down, if y'all hurry up and read them, I can hurry up and get through. Psalms 8, 6 through 9. Um, Judges 5, 18 through 22. Now, we're talking about warfare prayers tonight. The Bible said, I, I behold, I've given you power over serpents, over scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. What does all mean? All mean all. Come on, somebody. Over all the enemy's powers. He said, I've given you power over all the power of the And he said, nothing by any means will harm you. But you got to believe that. You got to know it first that you got authority over it over all the powers, of, and then you got to believe that. And if you sit up here and be scared, then he can get you. Because fear works like faith for the devil. Come on, somebody. Okay, so Psalms 8, 6, and 9. Somebody read that real fast. We're trying to go real quick tonight. We don't have a lot of time. He's talking about humanity. Thou made him have dominion over the works of his hands and put everything under humanity's feet, the Christians. I'm talking about people that's really saved and know the word of God. We're supposed to have dominion over everything. Is that in there? It says some things. We got Genesis 1, 26 said the same thing. Gave them dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the all of that. In other words, we are supposed to rule over these things. We can allow things to 
come and take us over if we want to, but he said, I'm giving you authority over it. If you will use the authority that I give you, then you will live a victorious life. Come on, somebody. Okay, Genesis 1, 2, and 6. Read a little bit more uh, in that same passage. Read a little bit more. See? All the animal kingdom, come on. Uh, come on. In the sea, the, the ocean, come on. Everything in the water, everything flying up in the sky, everything crawling on the ground, naturally and spiritually. See, we ain't so much worried about the natural snake. It's that spiritual one that you better learn how to fight. Come on, somebody. Read some more. Okay. Is that it? Is that all of that? Six through nine? All right. Let's go to uh, Judges 5, 18 through 22. We're talking about warfare tonight. Now, I wanted to give you a scripture about the first heaven. You know about the first heaven, Genesis 1, 14. That's the one you can see when you're up in the sky. Whether you know it or not, there's three heavens. And the first heaven is what your eyes can see. When we're in an airplane, anybody that's ever been in an airplane, even as high up as we are in the airplane, and you look out and the clouds look like a sea of cotton, that's still just the first heaven. You ain't seen the second heaven. You don't know how to deal with that second heaven unless you get in the spirit realm. But there's a horrible kingdom in the second heaven. All the demonic angels... And there are some despicable, diabolical uh, spirits that are even more wicked than Satan himself in the second heaven. That's where all our problems are coming from. If you're being attacked at all, it's coming from the second heaven. Huh? Not, 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 not this one. This is a beautiful one we see. That's just the atmosphere. And they're separated. Come on, somebody. And there's a second heaven in between the first and the third. And even your prayers have to penetrate and come past that, go up and down through. If you ain't praying right, some of your prayers don't get through that second heaven. Come on, somebody. That namby-pamby prayer ain't going nowhere. Come on, some, some of us are still praying earthbound prayers and wonder why nothing's happening in our life. You're going to have to start praying from the spirit realm. You're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. you got to pray uh, from heavenly bound prayers. In other words, I don't pray down here like I'm way down here looking real pitiful, crying and screaming all the way up somewhere trying to find God. I'm sitting in the throne room of God when I'm praying. And I'm looking down on everything. Come on, somebody. Let me give you a little, just try to get you to see a uh, vision here. You ain't going to sit up here uh, and do all this. Some people think we're doing all this. Sometimes you see these movies where they're fighting and all they're like all this karate and stuff. Somebody got a gun. Somebody got a knife. And somebody want to take time and do all this. Oh, you, I'm going to shoot. If I got a gun, I'm going to just bang and keep it moving. Huh? I ain't going to still sitting up here wasting all my energy, effort, and time. Ooh. And some of us like that in the spirit. Wore out. Huh? One person that wore you down, and then you got all these other ones coming at you. When if you got a, a machine gun, da -da 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 I'm going to just sway it like that and walk on through. Like, call y'all listening to me? Huh? What's that other thing that, that, that to blow up the hole? Uh, do you need sometimes you need some spiritual grenades? Come on, somebody. What's that thing that that, 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 that no that thing on your shoulder that blow a whole building out? I heard to get you some bazooka prayers. Huh? Quit playing quit playing these little uh, one shot prayers going on the bed. Are y'all listening to me? You better get you some bazookas in the spirit. Huh? And say, wait a minute, what is that? I said, let me just blow the whole building down tonight and rest and not have to worry about the devil no more. I ain't going to rest so all night. I need a bazooka prayer. That's right. Because he's given you power over everything. But you got to learn to pray the word of God. It can't be all of this. You know what? I'm going to have to help somebody tonight. David came in, he was out on battle, and he came in and they realized that the whole, when he got back, the wives was taking the kids, everything. Everybody began to scream and holler and cry. These is mighty men that was the soldiers. Huh? And even they spoke at one point, even they was going to stone David. Because they act like it was his fault. It's this church folk, you know, these church people. Come on, somebody. We know that spirit. People screaming, people hollering. They so sad. Now, let me help you today. Go on and cry. Get it out if you got to grieve. But after that, forget all 
let down, get up and go fight. Huh? Come on, somebody. Some of, them got, some of them were screaming and hollering so much they couldn't eat. They lost energy, didn't even have strength to keep on to go back and try to get everything. Are y'all listening? But David went to prayer. He prayed and found, asked the Lord for advice. He said, do we go and recover or do we stay? And the Lord said, go and recover all. Are y'all listening to me? I, I ain't telling about some of it. You better go back and get your stuff. How the violence supposed to be taking it by force? Come on, somebody. Or you can just keep on doing like the right. I know, it's just a, uh, it's just a devil. Yeah. And that's all you're going to have is a crybaby testimony, but you ain't going to have yourself. But if you're going to get anything back, you're going to have to go and take it by force to get it back. And when David and them went back to recover, as the Lord had said, they recovered, not some of it, everything the devil took, you can get it back. And this time, don't let them come back and get no more. Come on, somebody. Because our walls of salvation and our gates are supposed to be praised. How did the enemy get in? Because we, our defenses was down. Come on, somebody. And he can come in and mostly come in because of what you're saying. Come on, somebody. Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. I'm, I'm going to help you with your prayer life tonight. Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. Real quick, real quick, real quick. We got to learn to watch what we say. We got to walk around and speak faith all the time. Even when something comes, start speaking faith. Because the devil is here to make us say everything but the right thing. And whatever comes out of your mouth, you give him a legal right to do that. Say, well, things really been going bad. Now, guess what? Things don't keep on going bad. Because you, he said, now, because you said it, he, have a, he has a legal right to continue, to, to, to make that continue in your life. Um, in the Bible, even in heaven and earth, whether we know it or not, and I had a scripture on it. I'm gonna give you. I'm not gonna read it. De Deuteronomy 4 and 26, Deuteronomy 30 and 19. I'm not gonna read it. But whenever something come out of your mouth, heaven and earth is listening. Everything God created has ears. Even the mountain. That's why He says, "Speak to the mountain." Uh, remember the fig tree that Jesus came, got ready to get something to eat, and when the fig tree didn't have no figs, he cursed it. God curses anything that's not growing. Come on. And, be, and, and, and so what's it? you got to learn to start saying the right thing because you have the same power to curse the devil. Come on, somebody. The, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Either you can be speaking life or you can be speaking curses all during the day. And whatever predicament you're in right now, it, it, it's, it's, it's indicative of what you've been talking about. You say, well, I just don't feel it. I don't say it. Come on, somebody. I said, well, I'm getting old. I ain't saying it. I know, that, I know. you know, my nature's going to take its turn. But Moses was 120 years, and his strip didn't uh, abate, and his eyes didn't get dim. Come on, because he was a man of faith. Same thing with Caleb. Caleb said, I'm, I was ready 40 years ago, but I got to wait because these old uh, people ain't got no faith speaking all negative, and they can't go in the promised land. But the Lord preserved his body. He said, I'm just as strong as I was 40 years. And he said, give me my mountain. He went right on in there. Huh? And fought like he did 40 years early. was just as strong and went in and got his church. It's up to you. You can kick out. My steps is getting short. Now, and I know each year I'm having a birthday, but honestly, I don't care what people say. I ain't feeling no 56. I feel about 30. And in my body, it's the truth. I'm not lying. They think I'm just, but I ain't going to claim it. My steps getting shorter. They ain't getting no shorter. They, I'm still walking, striding. Come on, somebody. I ain't claiming all that stuff. Whatever you say is what you're going to be. It's what you're going to have. You keep talking broke, you're going to be broke. If things get tight, I ain't going to even claim that. Say, I might be in between, but you know I'm getting the, the my finances is blessed. Come on, you got to speak it before it happens. You got to say what God say. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. When are y'all sing the song? Huh? Late in the midnight hour, but you ain't believing it. God's going to turn it around, but you don't believe he's going to turn it around. Come on, somebody. That's the reason the Bible, it's up to you. It's contingent upon your faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. That's why the Bible said, weeping may endure for a night. It don't have to go all night. Get on up and pray. You can be through with it in 20 minutes and go to sleep. 
It's up to you if it go all night because you didn't know how to war in the spirit and turn the situation around. It's all up to you whether you want a good life or whether you want to keep on talking about the struggle being broke and gotten robust and disgusted, can't be trusted. Things is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. Come on, somebody. The path of the justice has a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. It's up to you. He said, I sit before you good and even you choose. Now, we might not know that, that this is what we're doing. We're choosing every day. We're saying good stuff and we're speaking negative. But the Bible said bitter and sweet water ought to be coming out the same fountain. Because we'll come in church, hallelujah. And then before we get out church, you know, I can't stand brother, sister. And God said, and judgment's falling because of it. Judgment is falling because of it. You're bringing judgment on yourself by the things coming out of your mouth. See, you're, you're choosing that. Oh, y'all don't want to believe it. Well, let me show you. It's true. The Bible said, let's go to, um, it's in Proverbs. Proverbs, and I wrote it down. I really did. I got a bunch of notes up here, and I don't want to be here all night. But that one we might really better read about the power of life and death that's in the tongue. Hold on. Let's, uh, Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. Let's look at that. Proverbs 18, just to show that someone said, well, you know, I don't know what happened. I used to be doing good, and then something happened. Because right, you said it. Come on, somebody. I'm, do, I'm doing better all along. Uh -huh. You know, it's what you say. You, give the, you got two forces working. You got the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and you got the devil's kingdom. And whatever you're speaking, you're giving power to one of those kingdoms every day. It's about whatever you're saying, you're all of heaven, if it's God and the holy angel, Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, you got all of this power that if you speak faith, then God's the holy angels are working for you. If you speak negative, then the devil's angels, you give them power and you give demons power to do what they, because they, demons are earth, they earthbound. Come on, somebody. But in the second heaven, those are fallen angels. And they're powerful. Daniel, the 10th chapter. Let me just explain that because I'm, I'm not going to read it, but write it down and read it. Daniel had been praying for 21 days. And the prince of Persia, which meant a fallen angel, held up the prayer for 21 days. Now, Daniel prayed three times a day. Daniel knew how to pray. Come on, somebody. And he had enough sense to know that he wasn't going to let up in his prayer life until that thing turned around. Some of us here to miss with the prayer. I prayed about it, nothing happened. You ain't prayed but one time. The Bible said men ought to always and not. Did he say that? He said pray without. Come on, you got to keep on praying until the breakthrough come. Come on, somebody. You don't hit and miss pray once and then stop and then wonder why things aren't happening. If, if we prayed the way we eat, Oh, honey, we be living high. Are y'all listening? If you pursue the things of the spirit the way we do these now, now I'm going to go look if we pray sometime the way we watch TV. Huh? Honey, you have been and got all the mysteries and know how to fight the devil. You see what I'm saying? But we the first one. It's we can come to church an hour or two. We wore out, but we can watch, give time for the devil all day and don't get tired. The preacher up 15 minutes. It's a little long. Because we didn't got used to that. Oh, it's true. I said about the people at my church. A, a spiritual attention deficit hyper disorder. Because if you watch TV a lot, every 15 minutes is a commercial. And if you get used to that, anything's long after that. See what I'm saying? But in church, sometimes when we preach, we ain't got no time for no commercial because we're trying to get the word to you. But you done got used to every 15 minutes, then anything over. Hallelujah. We want to leave. Come on, someone. We want the preacher to hurry up. They got time for everything. As soon as the preacher get up, ain't no time. Come on, somebody. Something's wrong with that. They rushing, yawning. But you wasn't yawning when you watched them soap operas all day. 
Come on, some, some of y'all, if y'all was about God the way you were about the things in the natural, come on, somebody, if we would do that, your life's going to turn around. You're going to start learning some prayers that will turn your whole life around. I'm going to show you some prayers tonight that's going to help you. Come on, somebody. It's going to turn the situation around. Come on, somebody. This is true. See, whatever, they, they said this years ago in how Press is true. Whoever you feed the most is going to be the strongest. It's not but the two spirits. And we have a flesh and we have a spirit. Now, whether we walk, it, it don't matter coming to church and pressing, trying to impress nobody. Because we can, we all holy in church. Come on. That's a religious spirit. That ain't no power to that. Come on. Haven't you seen people that sounded all, they hooped and hollered, sounded all spiritual, testified to, they made the church shout. And for the night out, they done lost their mind. They don't know whether they can hold on to God. See, that's a religious spirit. Because if you really got the power you acting like you got when you leave out of the building, then you take some of that with you at home. Come on, somebody. If you got, if you love the Lord in church so much, somewhere you ought to love him at home and pray when you're not in the building. Come on, somebody. But, but, but we got to come out of fakeness now and get over into some reality now and be real. Come on, somebody. Not just Sunday morning. Now we can get spiritual. Want to get our Bible out. Huh? Want to look holy and all, you know? And we now to cussing somebody out. Come on, somebody. Let somebody do something from sooner. You, but now you're trying to catch it in church, but you wait. It's the truth. Do you know this flesh is not saved? Can I help somebody in here? I've been saved since I was 17. This is the honest to God truth. Let your guard down. The devil don't care because you've been saved 30, 40 years. I walked through the house and almost stubbed my toe. Hallelujah. I'm trying to bring the Lord help me bring a praise out because the devil show had a curse word right there at the tip of my tongue ready to come out, but God didn't. That's why I was saying hallelujah because the Lord didn't let the curse word come out. He don't care nothing about you how long you've been saved. It'll slip. It'll come out. If we're not careful, that's what you call a fiery trial. It'll happen so quick. Because the flesh ain't stopped learning how to sin, and the flesh still loves sin. We just reckon it dead. Come on, somebody. We just don't allow the the flesh to have its way. Okay, let's read them. Um, did anybody find that? What, 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 no, let's go to Judges, the fifth chapter, 18 through the 22nd verse. We, we have Bible illustrations if we will learn the word and not see people. Isn't it funny how folk will tell you to lead the Old Testament alone? And if you're not well versed in the Old Testament, I'm going to tell you, you don't have much of a prayer life. Because all the illustrations on us to fight in the spirit, most of them are in the Old Testament. These, these war, you see how David was a mighty, mighty warrior? He killed giants. He killed bears. He killed Goliath. You see what I'm saying? We're supposed to be doing that same thing in the spirit, not people. See, I'm going to help some of, some of y'all used to fight in the street, and some of y'all still ball up your fists. I ain't talking about that kind of praying because the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds now. So now we have to know the word well enough till we start using the word in our prayer life and we, till we learn to beat the devil down. Come on, somebody, and kill him. Some of y'all have, do you know when David hit Goliath with that stone, it just stunned him? Some of y'all just stunning the devil. If you don't get that sword and cut his head off, he's going to get back up. So I was doing real good, and I don't know what happened. I'll tell you what happened. You didn't cut the head off. And he got back up now. And when he get up, he get up mad. Look like things got worse. Yeah, because you didn't take the head. You didn't kill it. You better kill it. Or it, when he get back up, it will be worse. Now, I was fasting. I was praying. And I don't know. I was doing real good. And then when next thing I know, I was worse in shape than before because you ain't, you ain't cut the head off of nothing. You better cut the head off. Let's go to Judges. 5, 18 through 22, just to give you a little illustration now. A little illustration, praise God. Okay. Now, I told you about them thir three heavens, the different heavens. And then, um, right before you get to that, Jimmy, can you hold that? Can somebody else read Genesis 1, 
15 through 18 for me and then I'm going back to what Jimmy is saying because I need you to understand that you have to learn now when you're praying heavenly prayers you got to use the heavens to your advantage now, I know some Genesis 1 15 through 18 let's read that Light. Go ahead. To give light upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And it was so. Uh huh. And God made two great lights. Okay, come on, look to at give this. The, light to rule the, day. the sun rules the day. And the lesser light to rule the night. And the moon rules the night. And made the stars also. And the stars. Do you know you're supposed to pray and learn how to take dominion over the sun, the moon, and the stars and make them work for you and not against you if you're ignorant and don't know how to use them for the, your purpose to, to for, for, in warfare that the, 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 the demonic kingdom will use it against you. Now, I'm, I'm going to get an illustration. My teacher said um, it was on a plane and you've heard this. I've heard it different ways. But it was a man that was on the airplane and they said when the plane took off, the man was over. He had his head down. He was just praying all the time while he was on the flight. He was praying. He was praying. And then said he went over later to the man when the plane stopped. Before they got off the plane, said he went over to him and said, I noticed you had your head down while we were while the plane was going. You was in flight. And he said, yeah. He said, look like you were praying. The man said, yes, I was praying. And so he went on. He was happy because this was a Christian going on. He said, so you're a Christian? He said, no, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Satanist. I'm a Satanist. And say, he backed up. He said, yeah, we commit every week to fast a certain amount of time and pray against every Christian marriage all over the United States. Well, well, well. So and it don't matter that you out here trying to get in trouble. You ain't got to do nothing to get in trouble. If you're not praying the right kind of prayers, you're going to fall anyway because the devil's sending his, his out. They work, they, the, the devil's on his post. Come on, somebody. Now, the Christians need to get out the mall, get out the TV, and open and, 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 and get, in, get on their knees and pray. Come on, or sit down and pray. You ain't always got to be on your knees. Come on, somebody. I don't care. We didn't got a lot of time. Here we Father God, I ain't read that yet nowhere where people had that position when they was praying. The Bible said David sat down and prayed. You can pray on your knees, pray on your back. God don't care what position you're praying, just so the condition of your heart. He's worried about the position of your heart. Some, my knees have not been the best. I can get down there and can't hardly get up off of them. Are y'all listening? Because as a teenager, I had trouble even doing knee bend. You don't have to. Some people say, I just don't feel like this old religious spirit. I just don't really feel like I'm praying until I get on my knees. The condition of your heart is when you really know you're praying. When you humble and you submit and you're willing to do whatever God say and let him take control, that is the position. That get your heart in the right position and God's going to work. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And you got to have a position of faith. Okay. So now, the... the whether you, whether if you don't want to believe that, and I don't have time to go into a whole lot of that, but I'm going to tell you. The enemy uses the sun and the moon and the stars against us. I don't care if you don't know if you don't know how to use them. Now I don't care. People said, "What kind of mess is that?" She teaching. I'm teaching you what the Word of God say. Why else would the Bible say in Psalms 121 and six, "The sun shall not smite me by day." Or the moon by night, if it's not able to do that. Huh? And the witches know how to use the sun and even, or oh, y'all know it's true. Anybody that worked in the hospital or anything, y'all know when it's a full moon, people lose their mind. Oh, y'all know it's true. Say, what is going on? So, oh, full moon, that's it. Because the, know, the devil knows how to use the, 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 the universe, but we are the ones that are supposed to have dominion over all. The works of God's hands. And this is how we take dominion. It's through prayer. Hallelujah. We take dominion through prayer. Oh, y'all don't believe that. Okay, well, let me tell you. When, how, how else was Jesus able to walk the water if he didn't have dominion over it? He had dominion over it. Oh, well, it ain't just Jesus. Look at the plagues that Moses sent out. Y'all done read the book about Moses. It sent out flies. It was, uh, what, locusts? Come on, somebody. Darkness. Huh? 
He attacked the waters because every plague that went out was a direct attack against one of the gods, one of them idol gods they were serving. And God, and it was a lie. That was the strongest witchcraft of the day is the reason the Lord came so heavy. It had to have been some type of witchcraft the way Pharaoh wouldn't let them people go. Because now after, listen, when the water, too, when I'm sitting up here drinking a cup of coffee and it turned to blood, I'm ready to change my ways of something. And you know somebody had to be some hard-headed, demonic, show sure enough something was wrong. That the people, after that, then here come another one, another, and they still, and, 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 and at first, whatever, Moses throw his rod down, they could throw theirs down. But Moses' rod would always swallow theirs up. After he got to them last place, they couldn't even duplicate it. Because the power of God is more powerful than anything. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We have the power if we learn how to use it. Ain't no, no demonic force supposed to be able to come against us and we don't have authority over. You already got that. Here's some, Lord Jesus, please move some of these things. God's not going to do what he didn't already give you the authority to do. Until you get up like this, like, move, move the pencil, move the pencil. You're going to still be waiting because God's not going to come down here and move this pencil. I got the ability to move that pencil. And the same way with your prayer, the things that you can do, God's not going to do. See, now I'm going to tell you how prayer works, whether we know it or not. Prayer, we can't do nothing without God, but let me help you today. God does nothing on this earth except we invite him in because he gave us dominion. Now, this is wrong theology when you hear people saying, God's in charge of this world. God ain't in charge of this world. Because he, if he was in charge of this world, it wouldn't be rape, wouldn't be murder. Huh? We, we could leave our doors open at night and not worry about somebody coming in there still and break. You better lock that door. Because he ain't in charge of these demons that ain't saved. Come on, somebody. So, but you got authority if you pray. The reason, well, things ain't going to change. They're just going to get worse. Yeah, because you ain't praying. But if you pray, if the saints two or three would get together and touch and agree, you could change the world. That is what the saints said. We're supposed to be changing the world. No, we can keep on. Things just getting worse. Did you hear? And this is the conversation. Good. Yeah, good. Did you hear that girl got raped over there on third? Isn't that terrible? Things just getting worse. And if you look over here, yeah, and then last week, uh, some of us better news reporters than the TV. Yeah, and I was reading it. What did the Bible say? Huh? Somebody needed to say, I heard that girl was raped. I got on my knees then in the name of Jesus. I said, Satan, I bind you. Foul raping spirit to come no further. Come to jail, Jesus. We ain't praying against nothing. And wonder why it's so bad. It's the truth. God, if people say, well, it's just going to be automatic. I look for God. God ain't going to do nothing unless you ask him to do it. He won't without us, and we can't without him. So he said if two of us, as much as two, would touch and agree, he's in the midst, and that thing would happen. Come on, somebody. One is chasing a 1,000. The Bible said two can put 10,000 to flight. I can do pretty good by myself, but when I get in corporate prayer and we all begin to pray, look how many demons we can stop. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. This is what we're up against. This is the second heaven. That's the description of what's in the second heaven. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Each one of them is, is, is one um, different realms of Satan's kingdom. Yeah, yeah. See, we, we used to think and said high places. That's in the mind. It's a little bit deeper than that. It's a little bit deeper than that. Let me tell you what that it really is. Let me see. I should have some notes on it real fast. And I didn't even know I was going to go over that. Principality, A-R-C-H-O-M-A-I, I I can not say it, it's in the Greek. They're first in rank and order, and they get the power directly from Satan. They're the highest officials in Satan's kingdom or the demonic realm in his God's army. The devil is very organized. We can keep being disorganized 
moving at the last minute, sham babbling, never getting together, playing and getting a, and the devil will kill you with that. You know how the devil would do? He'll just have you just working and running yourself crazy. You'll act the fool and never get nothing done. But you got to stop and organize because every step toward order is a step toward God. Come on, somebody. If you continue to stay disorganized, you'll never get nothing done. You'll work yourself down to the bone and nothing never come together. But if you learn order because it comes from God, you'll find that you can work smarter and not harder. Come on, somebody. I can't work the way I used to physically. I used to go work uh, uh, eight, 16 hours on my feet and never miss a beat. I could work two eight-hour shifts like nothing and still have energy. See if I can do it now. Even though I'm not... I'm getting better. Come on, somebody. I ain't going to claim to be no old woman. Come on, somebody. But, you know, time bring about a change. Come on, somebody. I ain't going to be stupid now. Are you listening? Because uh, we don't, our mind is just as young as it always was. Some, even somebody said, I was at the hospital one, and I looked up on the thing, and it said, what is an old person? And they said, an old person is a, is a young person in a body that wake up one day and say, what happened? Because your mind will still fool you sometimes and make you think you can do that. Your body can't do still what your mind sometimes think that it can. Come on, somebody. So these particular angels, according to Exodus 28, 11, and 19, Acts 8, 6 through 25, and Ephesians 3 and 10, those particular demonic angels influence human affairs at a national level and impact laws and policies. Sometimes they will even embody a world leader like Hitler. See, it was a little bit, Hitler was more than just man, some kind of way. He eventually become possessed by something. Anytime you kill that many Jews. See, it used to be, can I help y'all, y'all? Used to be they had to worry about people putting a sheet on their face, a white sheet. Well, they don't worry. They, it's not about the white sheet now. They're the judges. They're the police officers. Huh? Come on, somebody. The devil's still getting his way in the court system. But we can pray against it. That's one reason why I won't vote for, even though God instituted the death penalty, I really won't vote for it because the way man do it, it won't be right, and we'll end up getting death, but somebody else, they'll let them off. Are y'all listening? It's not fair. The system's not fair because the, the, the wrong the people behind it are corrupt. Unless people really saved and filled with the Spirit, they're not going to do it right. And y'all know our country, when something they don't want, they just make a law and make any. See, they just change the law. Come on, somebody. That's how they came over when the Indians, this, the Indians was already here. I mean, they want to say that uh, Columbus discovered America. America was already running before he got here. But then they made laws. Uh, Y'all won't learn this till you get to college because they're not going to tell you this in the history book. Coming in school, they told us a bunch of lies. I, went, I cannot tell a, a lie. I cut down that cherry tree. They didn't tell you really what all they done. I could not tell a lie. Come on, somebody. And then if it was something in there they didn't want, they just didn't put it in there. Because you know what? Black people, we, why would we never seen us in the history book? We did some good stuff. See? But they didn't want us to know. But when you get to college, they tell it just like it is. Y'all know they gave them Indians? Well, they ever talk about it in our church. Blankets infected with smallpox and made them not ride a horse from West Virginia to North Carolina, made them walk. And they died, they call it Trail of Sorrows. And they, people, and they died at Tears of Sorrow. And they, Trail of Tears, and they died by the thousands. This is what happened. America's day is coming. She's not gonna stay where she is. God's gonna judge her for all the things that they have done wrong. That's why we wanna make sure we're doing what's right now so that this judgment won't hit us. Now, some things will happen if somebody, if we looked up next week and China took over, we would still come under, didn't, didn't it happen with Daniel? Daniel, when, when it was time for them to be, go over to 
another country. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was good people, but they ended up right over there with everybody else. But when they got there, Daniel made the best of the situation because he was a praying man. And it didn't matter who took over, whether it was the Babylonians, the Media Persian Empire, whether it was the, uh, the Greek Empire, huh? Every, he prayed so much three times a day with the kind of prayers that he prayed that he ended up third in command in all them. So God still wants to bless us and he wants to give us high position, but you're going to have to learn how to pray to, to be able to, to rule and reign. Come on, somebody, we're in training for reigning, but we can't wait to get to heaven till we learn how he wants us to do this thing now. Come on, somebody. Daniel kept on praying 21 days. He said the prince of Persia held a prayer up. That was an angel that held that prayer up for 21 days. And as Daniel continued to pray, continued to pray, it empowered the angels to have enough strength to bring that devil down. Are y'all listening to me? Come on, some of that. If he had hit and missed and prayed today and then waited another day or two, he still wouldn't have got that answer. You got to pray and keep praying until you bring the dark angel down. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in the high places. And guess what? The demons scaring us half to death. And they the weakest in the devil's kingdom. Come on, some. They ain't even heaven bound, they earth bound. Come on, somebody looking for a body to get in. They the weakest. Come on, somebody. And we scared of them. What you going to do with them principalities? Powers, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness. What, what the powers, exuser powers, delegated authority. They get their power from principalities that affect and infect structure systems. The five pillars of society, society, marriage, government, education, and the church. They mistrain us even in school. So that we're not able a lot of times to even get, they don't really train our minds in school to learn how to think outside of the box. They train, stay in the line, stay in the line. And when we know anything, if we don't learn to get saved and listen to the voice of God, we won't even be able to believe the word of God. Because of the way we've been trained from the time we come up through school, because the devil's not, the, the, the God's not in charge of the school system. Now you know it's not, you know it's true because they can't even pray in the schools no more. They took out prayer and they took the paddle out, and Columbine took over. And then you don't know what they're teaching your children in that, in them books and stuff. You better, you better work with your children at home. They start them real early when they in kindergarten and start. They bring, they don't. Can't say a lot to them, but they bring them suggestive books out. They put the alternative books out there. Here's a family, two mommies, two daddies. See, they, they show it to them. Out. You're not in school, so you don't know what they're teaching. You better teach your children before you let them out of here. Because by the time they didn't, when they get, that's what you call a stronghold. It was introduced to them way back when they was four or five, and they didn't even know. They just say, two mommies, two daddies. And then when they become a teenager, somebody approach them. It's a stronghold. It's a temptation. It's easy to go that way. Why? Because the door was open when there was four or five, and you said, I can't talk to them about sex. You better talk to them about sex. They could tell you some stuff. You better communicate with them. Uh, this is the truth. Rulers of darkness, Cosmocrata, and Skotos, very high ranking officers with specialized jurisdiction over the 12 cosmological systems of the universe and rule in the kingdom of God, darkness. You know what they do? They blind the minds of people from the truth. To facilitate sin, wickedness, and iniquity within the nations of the world. This is, now these are principalities, this powers, rulers of dark. This is not just dealing with demons. This is going higher than that. See the whole that's why he said we have to take dominion because uh, what we don't understand is we say God's in charge. Keep believing that. Keep believing that. He, the, the Bible said the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. The day is coming and it will happen now if we pray. He said thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth uh -huh, as it is if you're praying but if you ain't praying it's not gonna happen can I, can, can I help you today it's not gonna happen if you're not praying come on somebody
But if you pray, you can change it. You can turn it around. Okay. Now let's go real quick. Now I'm over here. I had to just introduce that before I got Jimmy. Now read real fast in Judges five eighteen through twenty two. See now first he's talking about the, these are tribes, tribes, uh, of these are tribes of Israel, and Zep, the, the, they were fighting. This is in the book of Judges when Ruth told uh, Barak. She, uh, up, up, she said, today the Lord is going to deliver Sisera into your hands. Now, people try to make <clears throat> fun and say a lot of negative stuff about him. But I don't speak negative about him because she was the prophet. He was a warrior. The Lord didn't speak to him the way he spoke to her. And because God spoke to her and not to him, he said, okay, but I'm not going to go unless you go with me because she was the one that had got the word. He didn't get the word like we do. All of us can hear from God today, but in the Old Testament, it wasn't like that. Only three people were anointed to hear the word. That was the king, the prophet, and the priest. And if you were like Samuel, he was, uh, you know, a judge, the judge, he was a prophet, he was a judge, and he ruled like a king. But only them were anointed. The rest of the people didn't get anointed to hear God. They had to hear it from someone else. So the people's ne negative and say negative stuff about the man, but he didn't have the faith because the Lord didn't speak to him. He spoke to her. So she said, okay. She said, but if I go today, she said, the, the God is going to deliver the, the battle into the hands of a woman. And it wasn't Deborah. See, we don't even go back and read the story. People think Deborah got Deborah didn't get the credit for that. So now read some more. We'll tell you who that woman was. Read. Judges 5, 18 through 22. Read. The high places, you want to understand. High places, you're speaking now about the heavenly realm. It's not just what's going on down here now. I'm going to prove it to you. Read some more. Now, when we read that scripture, if you read this story, you don't read nothing about no natural kings other than you read about Sisera. This is not talking about natural kings. It's talking about the second heaven, those kings and nobles. Come on, somebody. In the second heaven. Demonic spirits. It's talking about them them fallen angels up there. See? It, 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 nothing happens on earth until it first happened in the heavenly realm. Come on, somebody. That's why he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is. It first ha it happens there before it, when it comes to fruition on the earth. Read some more. Then the kings of See? Then fought the kings of Canaan. Read some more. Okay. Go read some more. See, because it's not natural. It's not a natural fight going on. Read some more. Oh, y'all, then is that plain? They fought from heaven. Oh, now you don't believe that the sun and the moon and stars got power? The Bible said the stars in their courses fought. Deborah was a prophet. She knew something about the spirit realm. Read some more. That's why Sisera came down. It was the heavenly warfare. There were angels in heaven that fought and won that battle in the heavenly realm before it manifested in the earthly realm. We got angels of God. There are still two-thirds of the angels on our side. There's more on our side than the devil's side. Isn't that what Elisha said to his armor bearer when Syria came out, 180-some thousand men, and it was only two of them up on the hill. Come on, y'all done read that story in the Old Testament where he said, because uh, he was a prophet of God and he had the, voice, the Lord spoke in his ear and he warned the king. He said, don't go around that way because they over there waiting for you. And so the king listened, see. And then he'd go another way. He said, don't go around this way because they, they got a trap sitting over there. And then after a while, the Syrians said, now wait a minute. Who's the traitor in our army? So somebody in here is a traitor. I need to know who it is that's not on our side. I said, because everything that we're doing, somebody is telling the Israelites what to do. And one of them was smart enough to say, there ain't no traitor. He said, the Lord God is speaking into the ear of the prophet, telling them all the plans.
hands in your bed chamber. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Say God's telling him what in your bed chamber, what your plans are, and warning. You know God will warn us what's to come. If we'll open our ears and pray, he will tell us before it happens so nothing have to catch us off guard. If we'll listen, he'll get us ready. Come on, somebody. And then when the battle came, when they came, they said, well, we're going to go get him. 180 some thousand on horses and chariots come after Elisha and when he came Elisha was up on the hill with his armor bearer and he said and the armor bearer didn't see what Elisha saw he got nervous he seen all of them people out there coming up against him and he said oh he said what we gonna do I'm paraphrasing I'm paraphrasing and he said he said, there's more with us. There's more with us than with them. But by him being carnal, he didn't understand. Oh, he kept looking one, two, one, two. He kept adding up. Two was all he was seeing. Come on, somebody. Ain't too many ways you can count up one and two and come up with more than that. All he kept seeing was two. So Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open up his, this is what the gift of discerning is. Lord, open up his eyes and let him see. And for a few, he got a glimpse in the spirit realm. And he seen thousands and thousands chariots of fire surrounding them. Come on, somebody. We got chariots. We got angels. We got thousands, thousands, millions on our side. We got the blood of Jesus. We got the word of God. We got more on our side than on the devil's side. If you will pray, God will work for you. You got to pray and you got to have faith. God will turn that situation around, but you're going to have to pray. And he used his voice, his words like you do. When they got there, Elisha never was even nervous. He said, Lord, smite them with blindness. And the whole army become blind. Now, you got the ability to do that in the spirit. You got to learn to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we blind the third eye, every demonic spirit, every familiar spirit coming against us. We blind them in the name of Jesus. They can't see me. Come on, somebody. We, we got walls. Firewalls protect me to where it is. it would be impossible for them to track or trace me in the realm of the spirit. Come on, somebody. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover my family with the blood of Jesus. I decree and declare that our gates of salvation, our walls of salvation, our gates are praised in the name of Jesus. When the enemy come in like a flood, the Lord is going to raise up a standard against him. No weapon formed against me will ever, ever prosper. The gates of hell shall never prevail against me because I stand on the authority of the word of God. And you said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I'm part of the church in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare every spirit coming against me. I command you to fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Never. They are wounded, falling at my feet, never to rise again. You got to get valid in your prayer life. You got to cut the devil's head off. Come on, somebody. You got to learn how to pray. Huh? You got to learn how to pray. According to the word of God, there's more warfare scriptures in the book of Psalms. You can use them prayers and you can stop the devil. Come on, somebody. You can stop him in his tracks. Come on, somebody. Read some more. Uh, Brother Jimmy, read some more. Keep on reading. Come on, read some more. And you can say, see, it's Bible. Father, in the name of Jesus, like the river of Kishon swept them away, in the name of Jesus, I command in the spirit for them to be swept away now in Jesus' name. Every Pharaoh pursuing me, I command in the name of Jesus that he drown now in the Red Sea of my situation. Come on, somebody. Those, those, those stories are there to teach you how to fight. Read some more. See, do you know what? There's horses. 
horses in the spirit realm. They don't talk about cars and engines and all of that, but it talks about horses. There's demonic horsemen. You got to come against them horses. Every chariot, every chariot of iron and them horses, I command the rider and the horse to go to sleep and not wake up. That's the scripture, you know, whether you know it or not. In a minute, I'm going to read some scriptures to show you how to pray because I just got a book with it already written down. It's real easy. I just pulled a book out. Come on, somebody. You ain't always got to stand and make them up. Come on, somebody. There's books with the scriptures already written down. Come on, somebody. Read some more. Read some more. See? See, the mighty ones is talking about them, them fallen angels. Come on, somebody. And then the spiritual angels are mighty ones. Mighty. The power, the God that we have, the power, the power that's on God's side, it outnumbers the enemy. Come on, somebody. Read some more. Read some more. Just keep reading. I got to get down here to show you who, who ended up uh, getting, winning that battle, the, the one that the, got the credit for that battle that day. Read some more. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the angel of the Lord curse every enemy that's, that's following me. Huh? The strong men on both sides of my family, I command them to kill themselves. Come on, somebody. You better learn. You can't quit. You, quit. you gotta quit being cute. You got to command the devil to die out of your life. That's why he's living, cause you ain't commanding him to die. Read some more. Mm-hmm. Read some more. J L was the wife of who? The wife of Heber, the Kenite. Okay, read some more. Blessed shall she be above women what? In the tent. Guess what? J.L. shows us the power of a praying woman. Come on, somebody. A housewife. Come on, somebody. Huh? A, a housewife is powerful if she know how to pray. Because guess what? This enemy sister were with the run, and he was losing the battle, and he ran into her tent. And he thought he had a friend. And she was on the Lord's side. Come on, somebody. Come on. Sometimes you got to fool the devil. You can't let him know what you know. Come on, somebody. He came in. He said, Ooh. He said, if anybody come, he said, don't tell them I'm here. She said, okay. okay. He said, give me some water. She didn't give him water because she, she didn't take advice from the devil. She got the milk on somebody. And then he was so tired. He said, oh, I'm so tired. She said, lay your head in my lap. Come on, somebody. We, we got to quit being Delilah. Somebody got to become JL. Uh, Y'all yeah, don't want to hear that. Come on, somebody. Delilah has Samson in her lap and he lost all his power. You better get out of Delilah's lap and you better learn to use your lap for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We quit being Delilah. Let's become JL in the spirit. And he went to lay his head and he just knew he was just getting some rest and she rocked him all the way to sleep or let him go to sleep. Then she went and got that tent peg about this big. And she took that tent peg, and I've been reading this for the long one, and she put it to the temple of his head with that hammer and killed that fool. Come on, somebody. You got to put that. Th Let me tell you something. When I read a little closer, I was looking at this. See, the reason he ran to her tent, her husband was friends with Sisera. How many know that even if your husband don't know the danger and he in, if you the wife of your house, you know how to pray and protect your home. Come on, somebody. Maybe he don't understand, but you know it's a danger to your family. This thing could get me in trouble. He's being peaceful. When I need to put something to death, I ain't got to say nothing to him, but I can get on my knees and pray and save my family. I'm not going to let the devil take my family away. Are y'all listening to me? And then, I, I've been saying for the longest about the tent pit, but after she, read some more, Jimmy, after she killed him, she did what I told her, she cut his head off. Come on, somebody, read, Jimmy, is it said that or not? Gave me a read some more. Uh-huh. Oh, let's make the enemy think you just heard. You want some cookies? 
Come on, somebody. Have great hospitality. That fool in here, he don't know he'll never make it out of here alive. That's the way you're You got to be that deadly in your prayer life. Next time, you're always letting the devil know what's going on. The next time something go wrong, jump up and start praising the Lord. And it, it confused the devil. He don't know what to do. He's waiting on you. Like, I'm just hard. I just don't know what to do. He know he winning then. Come on, somebody. Just like Sherry, I preached the other night. Honey, that's time when it's time for a crazy pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> read some more. Read some more. Uh huh. Woo! Got the hammer and the nail. Some of y'all waiting on the Uzi and all, but honey, she could use the hammer and the nail. Whatever you got around you, that can become a weapon. Come on, somebody. What's laying around? Your Bible is right there. There's your weapon right there. Read some more. Mm. And then she cut his head off. Y'all see that? Y'all better cut the head off of some of this stuff and quit playing with the devil. You're being cute. And I just want the devil to stop. And I'll just give you praise, God. No, I want them dead. I don't want them to rise up again. I want that scripture in Psalm saying, they are wounded, falling at my feet, never to rise again. I don't want to have to worry with this problem no more. Come on, somebody. And you have that authority, but people are not telling you. We still think, Father God, I come in the most humblest manner I know how. Now, maybe that didn't even get to the ceiling. Now, maybe it didn't. Now, maybe it did. I don't know. But you got to pray different. I got a book here. Let me, let, me, let me show you just a few things, and I'm sitting down. I'm pretty much winding it up now. Praise God. Uh, I'm praying out of um, the name of this book is Prayers That Route Demons, okay? It's all scriptures, all scriptures. Prayers That Route Demons is what it's called. And it's about uh, Bishop John Icard. And this is the way it looks if you uh, decide to get it. It's a brown book. You can order it or you can download it. You know, we got these Kindles. We got internet and everything. But wonder if we're using it for God. I got so many prayer books. Now. I use different warfare, honey. I don't just, right here is how it look. And about every kind of prayer you imagine, if you pray. I, try to, I just went through it this week. I read through the whole book this week. I, I pray it out loud. These are not prayers that you read privately and secretly. Ain't no silent prayer. You got to speak this stuff out loud. Because whatever you say, you're going to have it. You have to speak it into the atmosphere so that the devil can hear it. Come on, somebody. And you will see results. Come on, somebody. You will see results. Okay. Let me go to a prayer here I was reading today. Uh, closing the breaches and hedges. Now, um, Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. And then we close it. Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. Because a lot of us have said things we had no business saying. And you give the enemy a power and authority in your life. I'm going to show you how to close that up. Retract that. Get that out so because it's working against you. And start saying the right thing. Come on, somebody. And this, there, there's a prayer in here called Closing Breaches and Hedges. Now read Ecclesiastes 10 and 8 and read what it says. Whoever got that. See, now understand when you're looking at this. It's an analogy coming. A person digging a pit. You're looking at somebody. Think about somebody dig, dig, digging dirt for a graveyard. Because that's what your mouth is doing when you're saying the wrong thing. It's all talking about words right here, whether we know it or not. And it uses different analogies. Go some more. What does it say? You're going to fall into the ditch because you kept on talking, kept on talking. Next thing you know, you fail. You're not going to stay safe speaking negative. Come on, somebody. Read some more. Whoever broke the heads, didn't Job have a hedge of protection around him? You know how he broke the heads? He started saying every day, oh, perhaps my children have cursed God. And he broke that hedge. And when, when you break the hedge, guess what? The serpent bites. And that's what happened to Job. Come on, somebody. And it's what's going to happen in your life if you don't start speaking the right thing. Quit telling me, I just don't know what my children, they're just acting bad. Well, they're going to keep on acting bad. Start saying they're doing good and they'll start living what you're saying. Read some more. Serpent's gonna, Serpent gonna bite. Read some more. Whoso removes a stone shall be cursed. 
See, read some more. See, all of this is still stones. What are stones? People, they don't think about the natural stone. People throw stones at you. Now, you up and tied up in some gossip now because you're going over there talking about, well, you know, girl, I just want you to know you moving stones. And guess what? It eventually hurt you if you're moving them. Come on, somebody, read some more. Okay, because it's words. Come on, words will hurt you. Read some more. Uh huh. See, come on, read some more. Uh huh. Oh, wait a minute. If the what be blunt? You got an axe that's not sharp. You're going to have to work yourself real hard to cut that wood. Some of your prayer life is not sharp, it's dull. That's why you wore out after about 15 minutes. Oh, Lord. I just don't know if I can pray over 15 minutes. Why? Because your axe ain't sharp. If you sharpen up that axe, you can cut you can cut that wood up real good if you sharpen, sharpen the blade. And you sharpen the blade by using it. By using by praying more. Come on, somebody. Read some more. I'm church, so tonight I'm just saying, and then we're going to go, I'm going to start doing some prayer. I'm trying to give you some wisdom tonight, and if you use it, it'll direct you. Your prayer life will change, and you'll find all this, what you're talking about, you ain't got victory over, you'll find you can have victory over. Come on, somebody. Now, closing the, this, in this book, it gets to closing breaches and hedges, because you've said negative things. Here's one prayer, according to Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. And you can make up your own prayers because the Bible said you shall declare a thing and God will establish it. it is, you have the power in your mouth huh, to change your whole life by what you begin to say. If you're saying it's a good day, that's why we're supposed to get up in the morning before the sun come out and speak to the elements and everything. Oh, sun, the sun, and, and say it. The sun shall not smite us by day or the moon by night. I prayed over my congregation every night. Before early, before the sun come up, I pray this every night before I go to bed. Sometimes it's 2 o'clock, sometimes it's 3 o'clock, but I try to make sure I have prayed this over my congregation before the sun come up every day. And some of them just leaning on that, but they better learn to pray some on their own too. Don't just look for me to do it. Are y'all listening? One chasing a thousand. But if 10,000 coming up against you, you better be praying too. Then that way we can, are y'all listening? We can, you see, but, but, but I'm doing my part, but it ain't going to be enough. You got to do your part too. Come on, somebody. Okay, so that, start praying that. The sun shall not smite us by day or the moon by night. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice today and be glad. Now, somebody thought that, man, I got to come to church and rejoice and be glad. You better be glad when you wake up because you didn't have to wake up. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be glad that I'm still living because I could have been dead. Come on, somebody. You wake up with a praise on your heart and, 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 and let it come out of your mouth. Thank you. This is the day that the Lord, I'm going to have a good day. Quit talking about I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Come on, somebody. Pray. Okay, read some more. Oh, I'm going to read. I close up any breach in my life that would give Satan and demons access in the name of Jesus. That's according to Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. I pray for every broken hedge in my life to be restored in the name of Jesus. That's according to Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. And you can make it up your own way because the Bible said if you decree a thing, it means make your prayers, compose your prayer. Whatever you say according to the word, God will do it. He will do it. Come on. You're giving the angels. The angels move. And according to Psalms 103, we just said it for years. We quote it anyway. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels. Okay, well, we speak English. That's our tongue. The, 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 the tongue of angels is when you pray the word. So when you pray the scripture, now angels marshal according to one, Psalms 103. Angels move out and start moving. Sister K, the minute you begin to start praying the word of God, the army get to marching. They get excited. Some of them, some angels just sitting around not doing it, but you get to pray. They, doom, doom, they start marching out. And then whatever you say, come on, the kingdom of heaven, God begins to work. Them, them angels are dispatched, whether it's prosperity angels. Come on, whether it's healing angels. Come on, somebody. Whatever you are praying, them angels start moving when you begin to pray God's word. That's what the word of God says according to Psalms 103 and 20, if I'm not mistaken. But it's in the book. You read it. It's in there. 
Come on, somebody. I stand in the gap and make up the head. Ezekiel 22 and 30. Come on, somebody. I repent and receive forgiveness for any sin that has opened the door for any spirit to enter and operate in my life. According to Ephesians 4, 27, I'm going to rebuild the wall and repair up the breach. Everything that today I've been turned down with my mouth, I'm building it back up. Are y'all listening to me? Come on. I renounce all crooked speech that will cause a breach in the name of Jesus, Proverbs 15 and 4. Bind up all my breaches, O oh Lord, Isaiah 30, 26. Let every breach be stopped in the name of Jesus, Nehemiah 4 and 7. Let my walls be salvation and my gates praise. That's Isaiah 60 and 18. I pray for a hedge of protection around my mind, my body, my finances, my possessions, my church, my church, family. Come on, somebody. My job, my car. You got to pray this stuff or it's not going to happen. Come on, somebody. Jezebel, and I'm stopping after this. Um, I'm going to pray one more prayer here to show you. And this is just Jezebel. But this book got about every kind of prayer that you need. But learn, learn. Before you go to bed at night to command your morning. Before you wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, because it's too late once the morning get here, because now you're on the defense. Whatever happened, you're, you're operating now. Now you got to try to go against whatever's coming. But you can already set your morning to be a good morning. Now, I'm not going to say you won't have a test, but when the test comes, you're going to pass it because you commanded your morning. That's what he told Joe. Have you commanded your morning, Joe? That's what this whole thing is about. And that's the thing that turned Job's life around. That's in Job 38, and I don't have time to go over it, but Job 38 chapter, you'll read that. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit real fast. I'm going to preach real, I'm going to not preach, I'm just going to read a few scriptures. I'm going to pray some prayers about Jezebel. Everybody think Jezebel's makeup and jewelry. Wouldn't it be easy? If the spirit of Jezebel was just makeup and jewelry, it's deeper than that. Come on, somebody. Jezebel was a witch. She was a witch. It's witchcraft it's talking about. And the devil is real. There are spirits that can come against it. I'm saved. It don't bother me. If you don't know how to pray against it, it will bother you. I don't care about you being saved or not. You got to learn how to fight against this stuff or it will knock you down. Come on, somebody trying to find it right here uh, right here real quick because I know I don't have a lot of time okay right here prayer against Jezebel now you, if y'all read did y'all read in the Old Testament but you got to know the story for this to work come on somebody if you don't know the word it can, you know okay it says I loosed the hounds of heaven against Jezebel didn't the dogs eat Jezebel ate her and the, and the hands were so dirty the dogs wouldn't even touch her hands that's how dirty she was she had been such filthy and so much filth that hand. But you know the spirit of Jezebel is still in the church. It's not talking about makeup and jewelry. It's a witchcraft spirit. Something that wants to bring you under control. Jezebel controlled her husband through sex. Come on somebody. Had all the nation fell to the whoredom through what we would call today pornography. Come on somebody. They didn't have internet and all but they had somewhere where they could see something naked. Something they hadn't been looking at. And it caused people to backslide. Oh, up in them groves. They had a place called a groves. They go up there and where somebody go to the to the to the club where the woman topless clubs. Say they had a groves where they had trees that would hide, and then they go in there and look at a whole lot of stuff. Think ain't nothing new under the sun. It was under in the grove, but now they just put it in the club, in the bar. Come on, somebody. And it caused people to to to, to their spirit, soul, and body was tied up. That's what the devil, he wanted all. He don't want, he wants it all today. He wants it all today. If God wanted all, the devil wanted it all too. He don't want part of it. He wanted it all. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now you're going to either give it all to God or the devil going to get it all. Now you got to make up your mind. I rebuke and bind the spirits of witchcraft, lust, seduction, intimidation, idolatry, and whoredoms connected to Jezebel because Jezebel is powerful. I released the spirit of Jehu. You know, Jehu really worked with it, didn't he? Honey, I, I, I love that story about Jehu. He come riding in the chariot like Ben-Hur. The smoke was flying up. He was moving so fast to come against her. And she sent out a man. She said, go see who that is. They looking at the tire. See who that is coming. And said, it looked like he riding like Je Jehu. She painted her face. She got to make it, put the makeup on. You know, she thought, oh, I'm going to entice him with my looks. 
Now, I ain't saying makeup is wrong, but if you're putting it on to entice somebody for sex, it's wrong. Come on, somebody. And if we, if we can tell, come on, this is how you know. Say, if, 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 even I was on the, uh, I had to go to, to be on TV here a while back, and they got to keep your face in the sound, so they put a little something on. But if you can tell and everybody can know, it's probably too much. Come on, somebody. Because you can put it on, people don't even know you got to say, and they, and, and the saints is wearing makeup, and they say, honey, they don't know I've been wearing it for 30 years. Because <laughs> they know how to wear it. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, so I'm not saying, see, we get caught up in that and think that that's it. But Jezebel's more than, she's a spirit, a witchcraft spirit. See, I released the spirit of Jehu. So Jehu, they, she sent a man out. She said, run and see who that is. Meet the chariot coming and say, is it peace? And so the first man ran out on his horse. Jehu, he said, Jehu, uh, this Jezebel say, is it peace? You know what he's saying? He said, if you don't want to be killed, you're going to keep on moving. He didn't even cut a message back. He just kept on going because whatever, you're going to get killed if you stay here. He just, so she sent another one out. Come on. She making up her face in the window, you know, thinking this is going to entice him. It didn't entice him. Come on, somebody. And the next one went out, and he told him the same thing. He kept on going. Come on, somebody. When he got up to the window where she was, up, on the, up in the uh, second floor or whatever of this building, he said, who's on the Lord's side? There was some eunuchs in there. And they said, he said, throw her down. Now, this is the spirit of Jehu. And they threw her out of that window. Ain't had no mercy on her. Why you keep pity patty caking with the devil? You better throw him out the window. And let me tell you what kind of spirit Jehu was. Jehu went straight in the house and started eating. Didn't bother him none. Some of us would have been, oh, I just feel bad. I just show hate I had to do it, not him. And you got to have the same type of spirit when you're coming up against the devil. He was in there just eating like ain't nothing happened. And then he thought about it. He said, well, she was a queen. This heifer was a queen. I'm saying heifer, you know. She was, she was a queen. I guess we need to bury her. Go out and bury her. When they went out to check, wasn't nothing but the palms of her hands left. She was so dirty, the dogs didn't even want her hands. She had done so much dirt. Come on, somebody. And that's the way you got to be. This says, I command Jezebel to be thrown down and eaten by the hands of heaven. You take that same word against your situation and you command it to come down. Come on. I rebuke all spirits of false teaching, false prophecy, idolatry, and perversion connected with Jezebel. Some of y'all tell me, I'm just having a hard time. I got tied up watching this pornography. Well, you better come against the spirit of Jezebel then, don't you? Now, I need to know, how many times can the computer just cut itself on and get up in your face and make you look at something you ain't got no business looking at? You're getting up in front of that computer, hitting something to make it come up. I'm just having a hard time. I guess so. Come on, somebody. I loose tribulation against the kingdom of Jezebel. I cut off the assignment of Jezebel against the ministers of God. You know what Jezebel does to the prophets? She sends out fear and discouragement. So now don't feel bad uh, when you read about Elijah's power for his he was and killed Jezebel. I mean, killed off Jezebel's prophets and everything. He was powerful when he was up in the north, wasn't he? Until Jezebel said one sentence, the, what, what you done done, I'm going to hire you tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. He got so scared. Are y'all listening to me? He got so scared, he ran to the cave. Because she sends out fear and she sends out discouragement. Can I help you today? He had a suicidal spirit. He, wanted to, he, he knew he couldn't just say, I want to take my life. Huh? But he said, Lord, go on and take it. He knew to ask God to take it. Because he knew if he had it, took it, he wouldn't have been saved. But a suicidal spirit hit him. Because that's the spirit that goes out from Jezebel. It hits the church. You ain't so saved that the devil won't tell you. Sometimes I've been driving. And something will say, go on over the cliff. You know I don't listen to that. <laughs> but it said, just, just turn the wheel that way and let it keep going. Uh-uh. Come on, somebody. <laughs> uh-uh. Not me. Uh-uh. But he'll come if you listen. But I don't listen to it. Y'all listen? 
try to get the church so destroyed. Come on, somebody, as a leader and a pastor, he'll try to get me. I didn't want it to jump up and move. I said, well, Lord, look like they ain't getting nothing. I'm teaching, I'm preaching. It looks like they don't. It's just the Jezebel. See, don't listen to it. You're in spiritual warfare and don't even know. Don't let it get that far. Come on, somebody. Just send me somewhere where somebody want to hear what I got to say. The next thing you know, I didn't, I didn't come under. You listen to me. Feel all discouraged. Come on, somebody. Because that spirit's going out. You don't have to receive these thoughts coming to your mind. Get that book. That's a good book and it's some more. Get Command in the Morning by uh, Commanding the Morning. Dr. D.K. O-L-U-Y-K-A, something like that. And, and, and read that. And that's going to help you. I can't go any further. I'm going to stop. Hope somebody got a thought.